Hi everyone, welcome to Cat Stitch. I'm Cat from Wellington, New Zealand. Today is Sunday the 17th of April, Easter Sunday, so happy Easter or happy long weekend, however you're celebrating it, wherever you are. And this is my floss tube number three. I would like to say a big thank you to everyone that has stopped by, that has had a look um, and <laughs> sat through my very long um, stitches, uh, floss tubes, um, but today will be shorter. I don't have anywhere near as much to show you, but I'll give you an update. So um, do you want to come and say hello? Come on, up here. So this is Bobby. You might have sort of seen him in the background. He's an Australian Terrier Shih Tzu and he's five years old. He said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Um, so his name's Bobby McGee and my daughter has his brother. He's not he's not happy with paparazzi, he doesn't like cameras, so that's why he's not as perky. Yes, you perky. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Here we go. Now we can now see his ears do go up. He just doesn't like cameras at all. Um and yeah, so he's an Aussie Terrier Shih Tzu. Um my daughter has his brother, who's and his name's Jeffrey. Um but my daughter's got the run to the litter, and so Jeffrey is still like puppy size. He's just little. Um, although my daughter would say he's quite big, but when you put him next to his brother, no, he's tiny. Um, <laughs> he's a bit grubby because he hasn't had a wash. No, you haven't had a wash. Um, <clears throat> losing my voice again. Now, as you might have seen last week, I said I was going to have my first sewing machine lesson yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, on Friday I started getting a bit of a niggly throat and I just sort of thought <clears throat> it'd be okay. I'll just, you know, lemon, honey, ginger, a bit of gargle, we'll be all good. Uh, woke up on Saturday morning, um, coughing, headache, and I thought, uh oh, rat roll. Uh, and I, I, you know, shoved the stick up my nose, but no, that was clear. So I'm not coming back positive with COVID. It's just probably my laryngitis just flaring up, which will make work this week fantastic because I work in a call centre. Um, so it's not like I can sign language down the phone or nothing, but there we go. Um, yelling down the phone makes it sound like an 0900 number, quite frankly, apparently. Um, hey, baby. Yeah, so um, so unfortunately, I didn't want to risk giving whatever I had because I didn't know what I had. And obviously nowadays, you need to take extra precautions if you have any symptoms. Um, I didn't want to risk anybody else that was going to be there because um, there was going to be, you know, three of us getting taught. So I sent a message yesterday morning to say, I'm really bugged, I can't do it. Um, which was probably just as well, because I ended up migraine. So um, having my pills and basically knocking myself out for most of the day. But I did manage to do a new start yesterday. I had quite a late night on Friday, only because I was determined to finish my first ever pillow. So that kept me up late. Um, my finger, is, you know, like I said, it's it's healing. Um, I'm not sure if I already said that because I've done this like 10 times this morning so far. I'm a bit later recording this morning because I put my pillow in a safe place and I couldn't remember where it was. Hey, monkey. Yeah, come on. Come and see the camera. Come on. Oh, my God, you might actually get to see him. Come on. Here he is. He's monkey. This is Shadow Monkey. He's my five-year-old boy. He's just turned five. He turned five on on um, Valentine's. There we go. He's even you're even looking at the camera. Good boy. Okay, so, so there we go. Number three is the the charm. Hey, eh? it's only because Bobby's sitting on me. He thinks he's allowed on me, which he is. He's just opinionated. So, um. Yeah, so no sewing lesson, so my, my hope of showing you maybe a finished project bag or, you know, coming home all excited and, and staying up all last night <laughs> creating stuff, uh, fully finished items, uh, obviously went out the door. But on the plus side, um, I have made a new start last night and, um, oh, that was the other thing. I watched... 
my number two I said um so often and I'm so sorry about that I, I lose my train of thought so today I'm going to try and not um as much because that was really annoying okay so if I go blank it's probably going to be an um would usually go in that spot I think the reason is is because working at the call center we are told not to leave blank air when we're looking up information or, or typing stuff in and sometimes I can't think of what to say so I'm humming or umming or either that or I'm muttering to myself which uh, does happen quite often okay so today get back to what I'm doing today I'll be showing you my first ever pillow and also um, I will insert pictures of what the chart looked like because I have actually figured out how to do that now um, not the chart but you know the image of it what it looked like before I fully finished it and then um, hopefully because I'll be hopefully putting all this up and sort of talking about it and inserting it at those points and then I'll show you the fully finished item so there we go so um, What else has happened this week? Not a lot. I had, it was a busy week at, at work. I had a, uh, a, you know, I was supposed to go into the office this week, but the anxiety level went spiking. So instead I organized Wednesday afternoon off to do some, I suppose, tool work to try and just mentally get into a space where at the start of May when we're going back full time I'll, I will be able to cope. Uh, I have a diagnosis of SAD which is social anxiety disorder so I don't go very many places. I don't really leave the house all that much. Uh, so these last two years with COVID has been probably the least anxious of my, you know, that I can remember because I've been able to work from home and I love that. I've loved it every minute. But New Zealand is starting to sort of, you know, get back to a normal way of doing things and that includes needing to go back into the office. But we... It'll be two weeks in the office full time and then four weeks working from home again. And in that four weeks, we put in an application for flexi work, which means we work a couple of days at the office and then the rest of the week at home. I'm only working four days at the moment because I'm doing other things like my study and also doing some work on um, me, mental health. Um that um thing again so yeah so it was it was but it was it was a nice week it was it was pretty good you know uh next week we'll probably be busy uh only working three days next week because monday's a holiday and i have fridays off so yay and then i was supposed to be going away for my birthday uh for a week just to have a week away or a few days away um had to cancel that so I'm having a staycation which is fine and just you know staying at home and hopefully I'm sort of thinking well since I'm going to be at home I'm not going to have to you know try and pack up everything to take with me so I can fully finish items I've got a good chance of fully finishing a bunch of items uh the week after the week of the 25th in New Zealand the 25th is Anzac Day uh, so that's a public holiday for us and Australia because it's the Australian New Zealand Army Corps and it's to commemorate the men and women that have fought for us and especially the men that died in Gallipoli back in 1900 and, uh, very early 1900s I'm so bad with that I should know that date so I am also turning 50 on Anzac Day so 
I'll still be getting up very early because I go and do the dawn parade each year and I used to do it with my granddad when I was growing up and then when he passed I was doing it in his memory and I'm now going to be doing and I and I'll now do it for my dad and my granddad. Dad was in the Canadian Navy uh, which is how he came to New Zealand originally. Uh, they were stopped here in Wellington and he met my mum, finished his tour or whatever it was, then came back to New Zealand and never left. He stayed here until he passed away in 2020. So let's get on to some things. So it's not only showing the fully finished, I have actually got a little bit of stash haul, stitchy mail, whatever you want to call it. And when I was doing a bit of a, a show last week, um, no, week one, for number one floss tube, where I was showing all my completed ones and things like that. I forgot that I actually had stored out in the garage one that I had sent my mom unframed, and she gave it back to me as a framed um, hanging for the wall. And obviously no wall space, but I'm going to work out a way to keep it inside because the garage is not the most solid building on the property so I went out and I got it and I brought it in fortunately I think it's really lucky that I brought it in when I did because the um, paper part on the back is starting to peel a little bit so it's it probably wouldn't have done well for another winter out there it's already been out there two winters so this was one that I stitched Oh, I need, it needs a good clean. Um, from memory, it would have been early 2000s. It was one of the first big ones that I did. And for me, this is a big one. I'd only been stitching for a few years. I saw this kit. I can't remember who the... Ouch, monkey, do not attack, do not attack me, you obnoxious animal. I can't remember which whether it was Dimensions or one of the other ones, but it's called Stitcher Guardian or something, Angel of Stitching or something like that. Um, so here it is here. Hopefully you can see that without too much reflection because it's so bright and sunny. So there we go. And I can't tell if you guys are going to be getting a lot of reflection from that or what. But that was one of the first ones that I did. And my mom, she went and got it framed. And she gave it back to me as a gift. So, almost like re-gifting really, isn't it? Yeah. So, I just wanted to show that one. Now, okay, here's the point where I'm going to show my fully finished. So, it's going to be sort of me talking and, and you know, pointing somewhere. But you'll see up there, um, it was one that I showed last week about one that I started on Saturday just before my accident with my finger. I had only gotten a little bit done and it's this one here and that's from the Just Cross Stitch Magazine Halloween 2013 edition. I changed a lot <laughs> in this one because it actually called for Rainbow Gallery threads and I don't have rainbow gallery threads yes shocking I know I've got so many other brands but I had a look at the picture and I was sort of thinking ah, you know and I've got a black cat so I changed the cat the roof I changed to Karen water lilies I used weeks dye works Sally Sunshine or something like that for the moon. Weeks Dye Works for the pumpkins. Uh, Etol is the black and of course Glow in the Dark is the white. And then this is what it looked like before I finished it. And then I was sort of thinking of ways of how I'm going to finish this, whether I was going to flat, flat fold or things like that. I watched a lot of tube, uh, YouTube, Vonna, um, 
fantastic so educational I've got all these ideas buzzing in my head of oh oh I can do that oh I've got the bits for that and and things like that so I'll be going back to Vonna her, her tutorials multiple times because they were really clear very easy to understand another one is the vintage stitcher got a lot of information of her one as well I'm going to be putting links down to the YouTube channels that I watched this week um, down below because all of them gave me you know just ideas and curiosity about things so I got enabled a few times I was trying to work out how am I going to finish this am I going to turn it into a flat fold am I going to just put it in a frame am I going to put it in my journal what am I going to do with it and then I sort of thought you know what I want to make a pillow and I asked one of the lady or I, asked, I put up a post on the Halloween stitch um, stitch challenge site which I'll put a link down there can because Biscorno and I we have a we have a couple of issues I is especially when my finger is like this it's too fiddly for me to be able to hold properly um, and get the stitches on the edge and I have done one little tiny little tiny Biscorno only because I was I was just trying to work out how it's supposed to come together so I just I didn't want to do one of the big ones that I'd stitched I wanted to try it out on something small so I just quickly put a few stitches on a couple of pieces of fabric so it wasn't just plain and I created that and I'm I think it's actually in one of my bags so I don't have it on hand but I thought well I don't want to do a biscornu but I like the idea of how the two sides get put together which gives such a nice clean edge and that is going through the back stitch on the corners on the edges you know sort of thing so I put up a post on the Halloween site just asking is it possible to make a pillow using the same sort of stitching and yes yes it is so I thought well I'm gonna need to stitch something else to go on the back so I went um, onto Etsy and I found this cute little witch cat because only I, it had to be a specific size so sorry I'm getting attacked by monkey so it was like okay so I trawled through a lot because I was trying to find something I thought would be really cool and when I saw this I thought you know what that's exactly what I want uh, as you can see from the finished product I pretty much stuck to it the only changes is that just with as with the cat on the spooky one on the house the cat portion of this is actually using the black whisper I learned a lesson doing these two on the house one I used two strands of whisper and yeah it was a nightmare but it still did the job and it covered you know really puffy I was curious as to whether I needed to use two because I've never tried it with one so I did the cat with one strand of the whisper black a lot easier so lesson learned I'm only going to use one strand of that in the future which is just as well because I've got a few colors and the hat is in E12 and the band is Weeks Dye Works I did use the uh, 725 DMC which is the called for color that's the only one that I used that was the correct color and then down the bottom I put Halloween uh, which is not part of the pattern I put Halloween using the watercolor the Caron water lily color which I really really like I just really like that color so I've brought that from the front which is the roof to the word and then I brought the whisper thread which I used on the front also to the back for another black cat and I thought there we go we're happy now so you've seen what they looked like what the original chart looked like what the uh, end stitching looked like now here we go this now I'm not sure can you see it here we go this is my first ever pillow and um, I'm actually you know it's not the neatest job it ain't perfect but I'm really happy with it this was stitched on a 14 count Jodie Ree fabric called Old World Map 
I think it was. And then my cat on the back, and it's quite squishy. I pulled, I filled it with wadding, which I basically pulled apart because I couldn't find my stuffing. So on the back, we have my witchy cat, and there's the word Halloween. Oh, I'm a bit shaky this morning. So there we are. And my witchy hat. Isn't it cool? I'm really, really happy with that. I'm so happy. I was trying yesterday to put a ribbon or, or something around the edge. Yeah, we're not we're not doing that. Uh, maybe if I didn't use this technique to stitch it closed, I could have maybe done it a bit better. Couldn't. So what I'm actually going to end up doing is just putting a little charm on each side and I have heaps, which will be something that I'll show you later on. I also started putting together one of the Biscorno and I don't know if I'm going to keep doing it. I might turn it into a pillow as well, which is this one. I did the spider in the middle. I just created that. The original chart was like this um, sort of thing. And then you have the buttons in the middle, but I put the spider in the middle of this one. I created the spider which I really like. He's really cool. Uh, and that was just a piece of fabric that I dyed, I think. Yeah. The sun is getting really hot. So I think what I'm going to do... Oh, there's the plan. I'm going to pause it just for a minute, close the curtain and put the light on because I can't see a dang thing. Hang on a sec. Okay, there we go. Now I can see. Right, so... I'm just going to quickly show that to you again because now I can see what the heck I'm doing. So there we go. Here's my pillow. The front and the back. You can probably see that a bit better now because there's not a lot of reflection everywhere. And oh, my light keeps changing colour, which is very frustrating. But there we go. So hopefully now you can see that a bit better. How do you stop it changing colour? Oh my god. I don't want it to do that. How do I get to the normal colouring? Oh, no, now I've just turned it off. Oh, now it's too bright. Criminal. Right. <laughs> Let's try that again. So there we go. Cross Stitch Guardian Angel. She is very big. So, right, so now you've seen that twice. It was a waste of time the first time, but I ain't cutting it out. So... Um, what am I going to show next? My new start. I started this yesterday. Uh, and here is a... Here's a picture of what I started yesterday. I got this from uh, Etsy Prim Stitcher Shop. I do love the designs from there. This is the third Prim, Prim Stitcher Shop design I'm doing and I am so not sticking to any of the colors apart from the little bit of black down the bottom but every other color I have changed I am using a combination of different threads the tree itself I dyed the it uh, white it all it oil whatever and the way I dyed it was I was dyeing fabric and I just chucked it at the bottom of the bowl and so, you know, just to see what happens while I'm dying all the other ones. So it became like a motley sort of brownie grey. And I thought, I'm sure I'll find use for that somewhere. And I just sort of thought, well, here we go. Spooky tree. Why not? And uh, for the leaves, instead of the orange and the yellow, I'm actually using Threadworks. I think it's called War Paint, I believe. And for the fire down the bottom... That's a Carrie's creation. I'll have to double check. So I am using a couple of the DMC colours, but the majority of them, I'm just switching out and choosing whatever colour I feel like putting in. Of course, the word Halloween, I'm using my Caron Water Lilies because I really love that thread. It is really nice to use. Uh, so, and I'm doing it on Jodi Ree Fabric 14 Count Opal Stormy Skies. Sins. So that's what the design looks like. And here's what I've done so far. So I started this yesterday. And 
and you know I'm really loving this it is such a cool little design and um, yeah <coughs> sorry about that so I'm hoping to finish that maybe uh, tonight maybe and then I've picked out a couple that I really want to start this month but I am also preparing on the Halloween challenge page I'm going to be having a, a link to that down below so hey if you do any Halloween stitching come and join the challenge you can pick how many Halloween designs you want to do over the year to meet your target uh, you could do one one larger one one smaller one whatever you could do 50 like me to commemorate turning 50 so you know whatever works but I'll put the link down below for that as well also on Facebook is infinity stitches I've got to remember try and re you know remember to grab her link as well and she had one that she's done and I'm I've been putting it off and putting it off but I really want to get that started because I love it I am gonna you know choose cut my own colors because that's just normally what I do but here it is here if your path demands you walk through hell walk as if you own the place I love that the sentiment behind it I just sort of think you know what that rocks uh, so that's one that I want to start I haven't kitted it up yet witchy stitcher also had one <laughs> I've got those other ones still to finish of hers I just fell in love with it I love Sleepy Hollow and I've got the Glendon Place one which is really big so that's one of those big projects that I'm just not I don't want big projects right now I mental state and also because of my studies I just want small projects things to keep me you know quick quick starts and, and not too long for finishes and, but I saw this and I thought, oh, bum, got to get it. Love it. Love, love, love. So check out the Witchy Stitcher website. I'll put the link down below for that as well. Absolutely love her Sleepy Hollow. I think it's really rocking. So I might, because I don't think I've got any fabric that will do it justice at the moment. So I might actually try in my my week's holiday uh you know like coffee dye or something like that and then from tiny modernist i've actually started thinking i might try something other than halloween for a little while just do a few uh and this is going to be one of them it's a little fantasy the way that i look at it i can imagine little fairies coming out of this thing and and stuff and I put a post up on the New Zealand Stitchy page to ask for recommendations out of the five fabrics that I'd picked. And I did a floss toss and, and that sort of thing. And somebody pointed out to me that I probably haven't stitched on white in about three plus years. So as much as I love all the colours and the helpful you know comments and votes on which one would be the best one to use I'm actually going to go with the white opal with the silver flex rather than the gold and it will be weird stitching on white because it's been so long since I've stitched on white but I think it will work you know and so I'm going to be starting this one from the tiny modernist mushroom forest I just think it's really cute I've got a thing for mushrooms I'm allergic to them but I just think they're really cute so I'm gonna be starting that one now I have been trying to find ways to fully finish items and things like that and I've, you know, I like I said, I've been watching a lot of YouTube and that sort of thing. And finding frames in New Zealand is not easy. I see some of the ones that you guys get over in, in the states and Canada and the UK. These beautiful ornate frames, or you know, they're just really, really cool. And it's hard to find that sort of stuff here, unfortunately. So 
I've, I saw somebody, I can't remember where I saw it, must, might have been on Pinterest or something like that, where somebody used a shadow box and they created a little scene in front of the cross stitch at the front of the of the thing with lights in it and all that sort of thing. And I sort of thought, ooh, I want to do that. Couldn't it, you know, I, I struggled to find a shadow box or a keepsake box or a memento box, whatever you want to call them. And then I saw at Kmart one, <laughs> I found one, only a small one, so it's just going to be a little scene when I finally do something with it. But this is it here. So it's basically a 12 by 18 centimetre, it's like a 6 by 4 um, size. The thing is, because of what I'm wanting to do and turn it into a little Halloween scene, I wanted a darker wood. I didn't want black. I just sort of thought, no, I want a darker wood than this. But I didn't want to go out and buy any stain. So, as I have so many fabric dye powders, I was curious to see, can I use them on this? So I did a little experiment. I got a little bit of the is it Dylon, Dyson, no, Dyson's a vacuum. Definitely not that. It must be Dylon. A little bit of the brown, I think it was the 07, I think it was. I put like an eighth of a teaspoon into a bowl, put some boiling, you know, just like a, a couple of tablespoons of boiling hot water onto it, made sure it all dissolved. Then I got an old rag and I dipped it into it and I rubbed it on the wood. I didn't want to paint it on, I didn't want it sinking in, I just wanted it sort of like top coating it. And then I chucked it outside in the sun. Uh, to see, because I also wanted it, whatever wetness I was putting on it, I wanted it, you know, to dry really quick. And this is the end result. I don't have to worry about the inside because all of the inside is going to be lined or hidden anyway. So it was just the outside that I wanted to be a bit darker than the original. So that's what it started with. And that's what it ended with. Which makes me think that I'm going to have a lot more fun with my dyes than just dyeing fabric because I've got a lot of ones that are this lighter wood, a lot of a lot of things. So I'm going to try other colours as well just to sort of have some fun with. So that's all ready for me to make use of in my break. Um, some other, oh my gosh, other things. I have seen people using these sorts of things. And got a little one, just a little pointy one, and then the darker wood. So I got these from either Spotlight or Kmart uh, in New Zealand. And I also got this one. <laughs> Helps if you try and open the top part, not the bottom. So I just got that, and I thought of maybe lining it or something like that or, or putting fabric over it or I've got some adhesive leather and stuff like that and maybe lining it with that and putting a magnet on it and then I can keep changing it out if I do a bunch of flat flat finishes and then just keep changing out what design is going to be on the front of it that's the idea anyway it's nice to have these sorts of things so that if I do go that way at least I've got the parts already um, now I was watching the Vintage Stitcher and she mentioned uh, a blog, uh, Pinkin and Punkin Quilting, I keep on thinking I'm saying that wrong, but I'll put the link down below, and she said they've got some really cute, you know, designs, but she was showing me one that wasn't, you know, that, that was not saying I'd stitch, but I was curious, you know, always curious where there's, where a designer is, is, you know, showing off some of their free designs to see if they sort of design the sort of things that you like stitching. I've seen a lot of others, other YouTubes and things like that, showing their salt box ones, just these small ones. Just the little, you know, pillows of these salt, salt box houses and, and things like that. I'm not 100% sure what a salt box is. Is it a small house or... Did it used to be a salt shaker? Uh, so if someone can let me know that, that would be brilliant. But the blog had heaps of these lovely little 
salt box houses and I saw a few that were quite cool. Autumny, a couple of summer ones, even a Christmas one and a winter one and that sort of stuff and I sort of thought as an alternative to always stitching Halloween, I might start stitching these salt box ones. So I've downloaded a few of those and I was having a look through my fabrics and I noticed that when the salt box ones that people have done, they, they do them on quite uh, rustic fabric. So like either the cream or the ecru or the oaty sort of color or the, you know, the, the brownie sort of tones and that sort of thing. Admittedly, they, you know, the majority of them use linen. Mine ain't going to be linen, they're going to be 14 count. But it made me think, well, what have I got that I can use? And I knew I had a heap of this fabric because originally it was going to be used on a Stitch Your Own Adventure, which I'm sending over to Donna. Um, and I had a heap of the fabric left. I must have ordered a meter of it, not realizing how big a meter of the fabric would have, you know, end up being compared to the size of the design that was going to have to go on it. I thought that would be just about big enough. It's like twice as much that was needed. I should have just gone a half meter. But I sort of thought, well, what can I do with all this extra fabric? Because it's not too bad. I mean, yes, it's very neutral and things like that, but there is some slight mottling on it. I think it was just called like an antique ada or something like that parchment or you know i don't know something like that but this is what i've got and there is a little bit of mottling on it which i like although i have discovered the mottling is only on one side so i have to keep on being aware of that when i'm starting to stitch because i don't want to start stitching on the wrong side because that will just drive me nanas so yeah so there is a little bit of mottling on this and the pieces because i actually cut it up thinking i'm going to use you know, use it for all the harry potter uh Valenti craft ones but I've decided you know actually you know what I'm going to make use of this on the salt boxes because I've got you know about six or seven pieces and I thought well that'd be really cool and it'll be and it's big enough so that's what I'm going to be using for those okay stash stuff stitch email JK's cross stitching supplies is like my guru for stash stocking up I tend to Actually, the majority of my stash is from JK's. Janet is incredible. If there's something that I have seen over in the States or in Canada or, you know, out of the country, I ask her, can she, you know, she able to source it for me? She's never let me down yet. Unfortunately, she only sends to Australia and New Zealand. So if you're not there, I'm sorry, guys. But hey, chances are you've got a huge range to uh, shop with as well. In New Zealand, when I need something quickly or quicker, I tend to go to Stitch NZ or Ribbon and Rose, uh, different ends of the country. <laughs> um, actually, I'm, I've got some stitchy mail coming this week. I had hoped it would get here before Easter, <clears throat> but unfortunately, our mail is a bit uh, at the moment. So it'll be next week. So I'll have more stitchy stuff to show next week because one of them is the journal that I want to actually start using. Uh, I saw that on a YouTube floss tube that I can't remember who it was, but I thought what a cool idea, a mixed media journal. That is such a cool idea of what you can do with it. So I'm like, okay, but it'll be here next week. So it's an early birthday present. But meanwhile, from JK's, she has her website, but on Facebook, she's got two pages on Facebook. One is a chat page where you can just go and catch up and show the things you've been doing and, and you know, the, we, of, of things that you got from Janet, as well as, you know, just, you know, stitchy mail arrived and those sorts of things. Or to just ask questions and um, of what potentially would be a good thing to use for something. And then her other page is her clearance page. So she has got hundreds of items on there at the moment, clearance prices and things like that, just to clear them out. And she's still adding to them. She has got a lot to do. She is a single uh, business person though. So please, if you do shop with her, give her some uh, space because Postal System Australia or New Zealand ain't that great. Sometimes it's really quick, other times it goes like a dog. 
uh, and she's still waiting from you know for stuff from the states. I think she said when I last talked to her, she finally got fifteen boxes of things from the states. There's still more, and so she's got a lot of back ordered stuff. I've got some back order stuff that she said is all, all in, so that's coming, and I can't even remember what it was. So that's going to be a nice surprise when it arrives because I can't remember what it was that I was waiting for. Which probably doesn't bode well in regards to why did you buy it if you didn't need it, Kat? But, you know, oops. But I did get a few things um, on her clearance page because I liked them. And I thought, well, you know what? I can make use of those. I can have fun with them. If I decide not to do them, then they may become a freebie if I ever get to 100 subscribers. Who knows? So spread the word. Okay, so this one here, a Riolis one. I've never done a Riolis before, so this is going to be a, a, a newbie one for me, which is beautiful. I just... I was, I was reminded of Labyrinth, which is one of my favourite movies, you know, with the owl. Uh, I know some people would say Harry Potter because it's holding like a gold gold thing, a key. Well, it could be a, a key and a watch. I still keep on looking at it and thinking Labyrinth. Okay, so this one is Dimensions, and I... I I've seen it multiple times. I keep on looking at it and looking at it and uh, you know, sort of thing. But then it just every time I look at it, it makes me smile and giggle. So I sort of thought, you know what? I'm I'm gonna get it. Dang it. So it's too pooped by dimensions. I just there's such something about that cat, man. He's just really cool. I also got and I don't this, there's a high chance this is going to end up being a giveaway because I don't know what I was thinking when I chose it. I, I sort of thought, oh, a Christmas stocking. I'd like to, you know, try and do a Christmas stocking. But my granddaughter wouldn't want it. She's 10 going on 30. Uh, and my daughter's older and I don't really have any other kids. I suppose I could do it for my daughter's sister's baby girl. Little girl. Maybe. Or I could do it for my best friend. So if she's watching this and she sees this and she, she wants me to do it for her, then guess what? I'll probably end up doing this. So that'll shock my system during a Christmas one. But there we go. I just thought, you know, she was really lovely. And I've never made a stocking before. So I'm praying like crazy to whoever's, you know, up there. Um, that it's really easy to put together. Stitching I won't have a problem with. It's got metallic threads, beads, backing fabric, patterns and instructions, needle floss, cloth. So it's got all the stuff in the back. Very very bright colours. So yeah. That'll be a shock to the system. I also got a few charts. So I got Autumn Splendor. Which I quite like. I, I couldn't resist this one. Quit your, quit your belly aching. I just thought that was funny. Dinky dies. And I might actually get the required threads. I don't know. Although I do have some other dinky dies. So I might end up just using the ones I've already got. Uh, I had to get this one. Not every witch lives in sad, I'm darling. I have seen this one get done a couple of times, and again, this is one that I have looked at and thought, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then when it went on sale, I had to get it. So, the Boobus from Stony Creek. That was a, yeah, okay, we'll get that one. I like Shannon Christine designs. I've got a few of her designs. Um, I've got the Halloween Sal, which came in four parts, the quotes, uh, which is something else I want to you know, get started this year but I just sort of thought well this sort of meets what I do yes it's Christmassy but it's fairies so I like fairies um, so I got the holly jolly fairies which are very cute you have a look if I can get close enough without having major reflection going on I just thought they were really really cute and there's a 
bit of Krennic in it. And some Mill Hill beads. And then another kit that I got, it was a Riolis one. See, I've actually done one of these before, but it, it was, it's been given away, which was that dragon one. So I've, oops, there we go, can you see it? Yes, yeah, so I've done the dragon. Really loved doing it. And I'm hoping that this is the same sort of thing. It looks like it's a stamp. I should have actually read what it was like. Um... So, and that owl is also another one that's stamped, so it's got all the background done, so you're really just stitching the creature, not, not the whole, it's not a, a full coverage one. Um, you're just stitching parts of it. And I love wolves. One of the, you know, one of the first ones, like I did the mountain lion first, but then I've done multiple wolf ones. They've all been rehomed though, so I'm trying to get this so that you can see it and not get a major reflection. It is beautiful. So, you know, I might even start one of these this month. Next month's mania, I contemplated starting a new one every day. I did. I thought about it. Um, but, you know, I mean, my target's 50 for the year. I've now hit 30 thanks to the cat and the spooky house. So, I don't think I need to start 31, <laughs> 31 new ones. But the Halloween page, we've got our Mania version, which is every week, every Sunday, a new start and a new whip. I mean, you know, and, and work on a whip. So I'm like, well, I ain't short of whips. So I just need to pick out some new ones. So now I'm sort of thinking, should I hold off on those three? But I mean, honestly, there's a high chance I'll start a new one every week anyway, because I do the small ones. So some purchasing, I went and got, did a little bit of shopping because I thought I was going to be going to my sewing lesson and, and that sort of thing. I realised there was a few things I needed that I didn't have. I didn't have any thread for my sewing machine. I didn't have any is it batting? See now, there was already a problem with this, okay? Now, I thought batting and wadding were the same thing, and I've been told that they're pretty much the same thing, but when I ordered wadding, I got what was basically a huge bag of what I would use as stuffing. It's like, you know, I, I, I want to just... Like I've seen in those in those videos, those YouTube videos, and I was like, okay. So I needed to go and get some of that, so I went down to uh, Pete's Emporium in Lower Hutt, and they're like, uh, I'm not going to compare them really to anything that I went to when I was over in Canada, because, yeah, New Zealand version, <laughs> I suppose, of the dollar, of the dollar Tree. Um, can I just point out, just segue on that one, when I was in Canada and, and stuff, and my cousin took me to the Dollar Tree store, and he said, you know, everything in here's a dollar. So I get 10 items, take them up to the counter thinking it's going to be 10 bucks. No, you've got to pay tax on top of it. How hard is it to include tax in the price tag over in the States and Canada? Because it was the same thing when I was in, in the States. I was always trying to, you know, and, and every place has different tax amounts. You know, in New Zealand, our labels and our price tags include any GST taxes. That is the price you're paying, which is on the tag really simple makes it easy for people to work out how much they're about to spend rather than trying to work out taxes um so just saying <laughs> it would make it a lot easier if you put their you know the real price on things just saying you know if anyone has any power or, or you know to change that so i got a few while i was at pete's i i didn't just get the batting and the thread that i needed for the sewing machine but I, I sort of thought, well, there's a few more crafty bits maybe that I can make use of. Especially if I'm going to do like little diorama sort of thingies in my stitching with those uh, other boxes. So I, not like I don't have enough fabric. I'm actually going to include a video at the end of this, which will show... Um, 
all my stitchy stuff my stitchy corner basically it's I've got a bedroom that's about three meters square and everything I own needs to fit in here and so my stitchy stuff has to be very compact um, and well organized and so I'll show you how I've got my stitchy stuff organized as well but I did get a little bit more fabric because you know you never have enough so I got um, I actually got these from spotlight so I got this one just some fat quarters this one and these ones sparkle they're a little sparkly uh, I don't know if you see that on the screen but they are sparkly fabrics so that one and a pink one both have sparkle in it which I thought was really cool I don't know why I got the pink one because it's not like I really do anything that would use a pink fabric but oops um, but when I was at Pete's like I said I got a few bits and pieces for crafty stuff so I got these which say you know fabulous love peace and that sort of thing I'm sure I'm gonna find a use for those I got these they're little um, like mini logs and I thought well I could stack them and create like a little log pile and I got this little garden fence that you can just cut to the, to the length that you need so I thought well that can go across the front of the glass and then I've got some magnets just in case these are just little cheapy ones they're not really meant to hold anything majorly strong or anything like that and then um, I'm trying to remember oh and I got from Janet from JK's as well a flexi board not that I use them but I got one anyway just in case I'm the one that will try you know out all these things that I see um, to see is that something will make my my day easier and stuff I also got um, a couple of Michael Powell one of them is from my friend Christine and it's actually because of her that I've got two so Christine gave me shop number three to do and I've never done anything like this at all and then I got this one on our Facebook desk dash page and I'm trying to work out which one do I want to try first they both look really detailed <laughs> um, well, that's nine nearly ten inches by nine and a half and this one is nearly four inches by eleven they're both on 14 count thank goodness I well, see they're on white no, I'm still going to do the other one on white. So there. <sighs> okay. Uh, so today I was going to be in my PJs. We were going to have a pyjama party today because part of the Halloween challenge Wicked Weekend is you can choose different things to be wicked on the weekend. I thought, wow one of them is to stay in your jammers all day another one is to buy a new project start a new project uh what else is there buy takeaways don't do housework uh so this weekend i brought a new project bought the halloween tree and the cat i spent a whole day in my pjs yesterday because i felt like crap <laughs> So it's that I don't really do takeout but I made homemade takeout had made a homemade burger for my tea so and it was just done in the air fryer so literally I went out and basically made a sandwich uh, but it was takeout I definitely didn't do any housework yesterday no uh, and I haven't really done any today either apart from the only reason my room got a little bit more tidied up was because I was trying to find a safe place that I'd put my pillow And it was in a place I didn't think it would be. It was like a last resort check. And oh my gosh, there it is. So that's it. So next week, 
uh, next Sunday is going to be my last day of being 40 anything. Um, so I don't know if I'll be filming or if I'll be doing something, but we will see. I will be having some stitchy mail uh, to show you some haul that, I'm, that I've got arriving next week. I have a bunch of stuff coming from AliExpress, like buttons and, and ribbons and stuff like that. More the, the finishing accessories or the craft side of things rather than the actual stitchy side. And yeah, and then that will be in preparation to having my week off. Uh, I will also show any finishes that I've done and whichever new starts I you know, finally choose to to start next week whether I do that or whether I might actually shop the uh, the bags and pull one of my whips out to get a few stitches on at least because I keep on starting all these new projects and still leave those whips not touched uh, but there you go so thank you so much for joining me today I hope you guys are all having a wonderful long weekend a happy Easter whatever you celebrate um, make sure you get your chocolate. I've got some Easter buns. Oh, there we go. Hot cross buns. Are we fruit or are we not fruit? I'm a not fruit. I hate fruit in bread. I hate fruit in baking. I, I love fruit. I just don't like it in baked goods. So fortunately, our local supermarket does them fruitless. And last week, they also had these Hershey's chocolate ones. So it had chocolate chips in, no fruit. So it was like a, you know, well, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Chocolate buns. So I I had those uh, the last couple of days. And um, really yummy. But I'm a non-fruit hot cross bun. I love all the spice in it. I, I do. I really do. But I just hate the fruit in it. So what about you? Let me know. Comments below. I will try and respond to everybody, which I do try and do every week. I will be having a giveaway once we hit 100 subscribers, and that is going to be for, yeah, we'll make it an international one. I don't have a problem sending overseas. That's okay. Uh, meanwhile, if you like what you've seen, and if you want to see more and catch up again, please subscribe, ring the little bell thingy on it or whatever, or like. Uh, and leave a comment below. I will do my best to answer. My email is also going to be down below. So if you want to drop me a line that way, that's not a problem either. Uh, any questions, just ask. So from me, Bobby and Monkey, who actually made an appearance today, which was really cool. Uh, that's that's a, a new thing. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care and be kind, everybody. Smiles are free. Give them away. Totals. Okay, so now that I've put everything away again, excuse the messy floor, I do need to get a good vacuum. Here is my stitchy stash, that's shelf one. So, as you can see up here, I've got my ribbons and my fabrics for finishing, plus a, a sugar standard rush. Iron my Krennic threads, because I don't have too many of those. Then we've got whips and the bothy kits that I've still got. And then we go down, uh, there's the boards, I've got my washi tape, some more embellishments in there, my folders and card and paper. These are all my beads and charms and buttons. And then I've got felt and fabric in that. Um, that's basically other accessories and odds and ends. My kits go into there, the bought ones. I've got these rolls. Their adhesive vinyl and this is the roll that I use to cut off a piece to put between the Q-snap and the tightener thing. Hey monkey, hi! And then just down the bottom I've got my mini kits in there plus some other, <laughs> the completed charts I just put into the big box down the bottom. And then as we come back, here we go, cabinet number two. So up the top, I have all my crafty bits and pieces to go in. Then we have my threads. Um, 
trying to keep it steady, but my hand is shaking. Sorry. Just a couple, as you can see. And then down here, we've got some more DMCs. Now, these tags here uh, I got from a lady in New Zealand. She sells them on Etsy. I just print them up and you cut them out. Or she does them where she will be able to post them out as well if you want them already cut up properly and nicely shaped and all that sort of thing. And she does the stickers and, and tags and that sort of thing. And then we go down. I've got the complete set of the Sulky Petites. Set one and two, which completes them. Some more whips. <laughs> down the bottom, we have beads in there and my accessories box. And there's just where I put like my plastic bags and other bits and pieces in there. This shelf here at the front of it is stuff for me to organise and work out where they're going to go. And then we come next to it. And I've got some more drawers there which have all my accessories. And then the next one has my fabrics and the printer which is going to get thrown out one of these days. So yeah, that is my stitchy space.